Hi, so thank you so much for joining us today, Janita. Um, today we are going to be discussing what makes K-pop so interesting and why people should be paying it more attention. But to start off first, uh, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us about what made you write the article on BTS? Uh, yeah, so I'm Janita. I'm a first year. I do Ancient and Modern History at Keyboard. And I heard that there was kind of a want for an article about an artist that we should be looking out for in 2021 and that everyone should be paying attention to. And BTS were kind of the first ones that sprung to mind because I think that they, they've got some really amazing music, but I don't know that many people, as in in my actual real life, that listen to their music, just like they would listen to things on the radio. So I wanted to, yeah, put them out there and hope that some people would find that interesting. <laughs> Yeah. Um, what other kinds of music do you listen to and were you always interested in K-pop? Um, to be honest, I think that I really just listen to anything that, that I like. I don't have a particular like genre that I always listen to or anything like that. I Anything I hear on the radio, if I like that. So I like Taylor Swift's two albums. I listen to them. Um, I like K-pop. Um, I got into them through in, into K-pop through BTS. So I listen to oh. quite a few groups and groups that I don't know, just any songs that I hear that I like, really, yeah. yeah. For, for those of us in the audience who are not really sure about what the K-pop industry entails, because uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but the way that the entertainment companies are structured and the way that record labels deal with the artists are very different from what happens in um, mm -hmm. the UK or the US. So could you maybe shed some light on that? Uh, yeah, sure. So in the K-pop industry, there are three main companies kind of big entertainment companies, SMYG and JYP. And those companies are kind of, I don't know, if say that someone joins one of those companies, they're almost guaranteed to have some kind of success in whatever group that they end up debuting in. And the way that the K-pop system works is that um, people are scouted or they join companies and then they train sometimes for a really long period of time. That could be, I mean, it could be as little as a year, but some people have been known to train for like five years or it can be even longer. So they train and they get, they kind of get knowledge and they get taught in singing or rapping and dancing. So they have to be able to either sing or rap or both and dance. So there's quite a lot that they have to be yeah. able to do. Um, and so once they're done with that process of being a trainee, then they'll debut in a group um, or as a solo artist. So that's kind of how it works. And in terms of differences, I mean, I suppose that is already quite different to how it works in the West, but also K-pop groups have been known to have kind of less creative control as in some of the companies are quite controlling in that sense like this is what you'll do um, some groups do have more creative control and that's kind of down to their company allowing them to do that BTS is one of those groups um, other groups like Seventeen for example are another K-pop group who have a lot of creative control but um, a lot of the time groups from the main three companies they don't have that much control over what they're doing they just kind of have to do you know what they're told that doesn't mean that I mean they're so talented that they might have less input into the music that they're putting out. So would you say that um, the fact that BTS has a lot of creative control makes them stand out and um, helps them appeal to the audiences more or do you think that people who listen to K-pop or follow K-pop do not really care about whether the artists are the ones who are actually um, having creative control over their music? Um. I'd say for the most part, a lot of fans that I've seen like on the internet or that I've spoken to don't really, it doesn't bother them if the artists have creative control. And to be honest, I suppose it doesn't really bother me either because if I hear a song on the radio, for example, and it's good, I don't really mind if the artist wrote it, um, as in it doesn't bother me because it's a good song. But I think that for me, it makes it kind of more special, I suppose, because I know that the songs that, a lot of the songs, in fact, most of the songs that BTS put out, they've had a hand in writing them and that makes it, I think it makes it easy for me to connect with them in terms of what emotion they're trying to put out there if I know the backstory to the song, especially because I can't understand the lyrics while I'm listening to them. So if I know the backstory, then that, I think it helps me to connect with them a bit more. So I, I like that. I think it's really cool and commendable. Yeah. So you mentioned that you got into K-pop because of, K um, of BTS, sorry. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, you're just talking about how you felt like you could personally relate to BTS songs. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything else about BTS that stands out to you? Is it the um, dance moves or the way that they write their uh, lyrics or the, the meanings behind their lyrics that stand out to you that differentiate themselves from the other K-pop groups? Um. 
Yeah, so I think that with BTS, I like that almost every song has some kind of meaning and it doesn't have to be a deep meaning. It's just that they were trying to put a particular emotion across. So, for example, one of the things that I like best, I suppose, is that they had this series of albums, three albums, and the whole message of that was this kind of like love yourself message. And Mm -hmm. it sounds almost cheesy, but it was something that I'd never really like heard of or considered before because the whole idea of, I suppose, loving yourself sounded maybe selfish or conceited or that kind of thing but genuinely through listening to those songs and looking at the meanings behind those albums I've come to kind of believe that that's so important and I think it's allowed me to be like kinder to myself and more accommodating to myself as in like if I have a bad day I'm like it's okay (laughs) like it's it's no reason to be angry at myself or anything and I genuinely think that it's helped me feel a bit you know get a bit more peace of mind so yeah that's something I really like yeah that's that's really good to hear. Is, is there anything about uh, BTS that differentiates them from the groups that have come out in the past, like Big Bang and Girls' Generation or Two and One? And is there anything you think that makes BTS and, for example, Blackpink so much more popular in um, the Western part of the world as compared to the other K-pop bands that mm-hmm. may have been really big in Korea? Yeah. Um. In terms of differentiating from other groups, I think. Um, there's not anything specifically for me other than like the meaning I suppose that makes me think oh as in they're so much better or anything as in that's not what I want to say I suppose what I want to say is that every group has a different kind of sound and for me BTS's sound in their music um, is more kind of my style so I think that that's why I like their music so much that's not to say the other group's music is bad or anything it's just less my kind of taste in terms of why BTS and Blackpink are so popular um I think that there are a few things to do with that because BTS became really popular starting in 2017. Um, I think when they released this song called DNA. And um, I think part of the reason was maybe a gap in the market because One Direction kind of stopped making music altogether, I think in 2015. So there wasn't exactly a, a boy group per se that was kind of in the charts of that kind of thing. So I think that helped. Primarily, I think it was um, them themselves as in the the video for DNA was very bright and out there kind of unforgettable almost as in if you saw it you'd probably want to look further into them um, and it had really difficult choreography and the song was quite kind of general public friendly like it was kind of a pop song so I think that helped them to really kind of gain traction in the US and then from then on keep on getting bigger and um, as we've seen like their fan base has expanded kind of exponentially um, I think it helps that they have an English speaker because one of the members RM can speak English and I think that that's really important and I think maybe that is one of the reasons why some other K-pop groups from the same kind of generation and debuting around the same time in like 2012-2013 um, maybe weren't able to get that same kind of dynamic in the US because I think it's important that there was someone who could kind of communicate with the American audience. The same with Blackpink I think I think three of them can speak English, which is um, quite helpful because in interviews and stuff that can be helpful. So I think maybe that's part of the reason why, why they ended up being so popular in the US. Yeah, as well as their music, I think the English speaking helped. Yeah. For people who are not uh, used to consuming Korean media or used to following K-pop, it may be a bit intimidating for them because not just of the language barrier, but because there's so many elements to it, because there are like dance videos on YouTube and yeah. then there are the performances and there yeah. are so many um, different people that, um, mm. different members of the bands that different people spend. So yeah. do you have any <laughs> like advice on, pe- on someone who is interested to find out more about K-pop, mm-hmm. but it's a bit overwhelmed with all the information? Yeah, I can definitely understand that. I still get overwhelmed sometimes. There are days where there's too much to watch and I can't watch it all. Um, I suppose, yeah, we're a bit spoiled in that sense. But um, I think I would say take it kind of, let it happen naturally. If you're interested in BTS, watch a few of their videos, maybe listen to some of their songs that you've heard of or just type in their name on, on YouTube and kind of take a look at the first things that come up. In terms of standing particular members that's also something that can happen quite naturally as in I watch their music videos then I watch some interviews and that kind of thing and then I was like oh maybe this is my favorite member or you don't even have to choose one as in it can sometimes seem like oh I have to have a favorite member I have to have watched all of these videos it's not like that I'd say just let it happen naturally and 
yeah, there are lots of videos to watch. You don't have to watch all of them. It's I'd say take it at your own pace and whatever interests you, take a look at it. And then naturally you might find yourself wanting to watch, for example, dance practice videos or other performances. They have some really kind of big scale performances that are really fun to watch. So if you get into them, then that kind of thing just becomes appealing by itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, also, there's also a big industry in Korea for like um, their rap in their rap genre, like K rap. It, it's, I'm sorry, is it um, how it's termed in Korea? Are you familiar? As in like with rap. It? Yeah, because I understand that there are a lot of rap competitions which are similar to uh, X Factor in Korea, and okay, I was yeah. wondering whether you think that there's a chance that this K rap would kind of break into the Western market as well. Or mm. do you think that it is destined to be overshadowed by K-pop? Hmm, that's a really interesting question. Um, I don't know that much about K-rap. as I know that K-pop groups all have rappers, but um, I don't know too much about the genre. But, I mean, it's really interesting. I think that, I think that probably, I don't think it would overtake K-pop. I think part of the appeal of K-pop is that is, is the performance element, as in the videos are really impressive to watch. And I think that that grabs the American audience's attention as well. They've not, I think the Western market hasn't had something as in an act that's like doing this kind of choreography and stuff since like the Backstreet Boys or NSYNC or something like that. So it's kind of like bringing them back to that. And I think that it's, I think that the Western market finds it difficult enough to accept someone that's from a different culture and a different language as in that was quite difficult for BTS and Blackpink to do, I think. Yeah. And I think it's really yeah. impressive that they've done that. So I think that for now, it's still taking the Western market time to fully accept K-pop. So I think that K-rap may be something that comes later and that breaks through later, possibly. Hopefully we get introduced to more genres of music by yeah. different people around the world. Yeah. I think that's really yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. And lastly, just a fun question. What do you have to say to those people who do not find themselves wanting to listen to K-pop or uh, giving BTS a chance because of all the pop culture references to Twitter mm. drama by BTS army members and yeah. things like that? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, I suppose if you're on the internet, if you're on any social media platform, you probably heard about the BTS ARMY. Um, and I would definitely say I'm a member of that. But what I would say is that all of the drama and the kind of crazy fandom stuff that you see is not representative of how most fans of BTS actually are. Um, most people I've spoken to in real life that are fans, people that I know on the internet that are fans, are, are not you know kind of obsessive in the way that it seems like some fans are so I would say try to just ignore that because it can kind of I suppose it can push you away from the artists themselves the most important thing in getting into BTS is BTS themselves um, and I'd say that if you if the kind of flashiness of it as in the dance videos the intricate choreography that kind of thing if that doesn't really appeal to you then I'd say take a look at some of the, as in not the title tracks, because every title, every main kind of promotional track of an album will probably have choreography and K-pop. That's kind of how it works. But if you take a look at some of their other songs from their albums, then maybe maybe that would be more kind of up your street. There are so many different genres, at least with BTS, I know that, I mean, they have three rappers. Some songs are literally just rap songs. And I never used to like rap, to be honest, but I feel like I've come to appreciate it so much more. And um, they have slow songs, fast songs, every, honestly, every genre you can think of. It's just a, ma a matter of kind of finding those songs. And I'm sure if you like looked up particular songs as in like BTS songs in the genre of, you'd find something and that might appeal to you more than if, if the whole kind of performance aspect isn't your thing, which is fine. I think it's just about, you know, it's about the music. The music is genuinely very, very good. And I think if you can put aside the fact that they're so, that they're this huge entity now and they have this huge fan base um, and just think about kind of their music, then that can really help. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully more people are interested to listen to BTS after watching this video and, and reading your article. So. <laughs> yeah. I hope so. I hope so. So uh, thank you for joining us today and um, to thank our audience. Yeah, and to our audience, uh, please feel free to read 
her article. Um, 